Do you have problems with getting muddy results in your fluid art paintings? Let me tell you, you are not alone. Hi, I'm Becca. Welcome to my fluid art channel, where I will share tips and tricks that I learned along the way to help you achieve beautiful fluid art results. In today's video, I am going to give you a behind the scenes look on how I test my paints before using them to avoid muddy results. I'm going to show you how I use complementary colors and how I choose to layer them according to their opacities and transparencies to get the look I'm going for. You don't always have to use just opaque pa paints. You don't always have to use just transparent paints. Layering them effectively and understanding the difference between opacity and transparency will help you get the results you're looking for. There seems to be a lot of confusion out there about what opacity means and what transparency means and how that's going to affect your fluid art paintings. I get it. There's so much to learn. Like people think that fluid art is just like, you know, dumping a bunch of paints and throwing it around. And I mean, that's where we all start, right? To really get good at it and to really produce results that you're going to love, there's a lot to know. So today's video, I am going to be diving into the difference between opacity and transparency in your paints and what that will mean for your paintings and how to use them effectively. Opaque paints are more reflective, not necessarily shiny, but reflective, meaning they will cover and hide what's beneath them. Transparent, or another way of saying that is translucent paints, allow more light to pass through them so you can see what is underneath. A good way to think about this is if you had two transparent pieces of cellophane and one was blue and one was red and you put them together you would see purple because red and blue together make purple and you're seeing the light go through. However, if you had two completely opaque pieces of paper, say a blue one and a red one, you put the blue one in front of the red one, you're just going to see blue. <laughs> you're not going to see purple because there's no light passing through to combine those colors together. Does that make sense? So to, in today's video, I'm going to be walking through how to layer your paints, how to test them. You can see the behind the scenes, how I use my little canvases to test out different layering combinations before I pour them out. And hopefully this will give you some insights into how you can achieve the looks that you're going for without wasting a lot of paint and getting muddy canvases, especially when trying to use complementary colors, which can be so tricky. Are you ready to take a look behind the scenes? All right, let's get started. For the first test canvas, I am going to be using complementary colors. Green is going to be my base color, and then I am going to be layering pink and a red pinkish color on top. The pink is completely opaque, and you can see that by the filled in square on the bottle. The red is completely transparent, and the green is also transparent. The transparency of the base color doesn't matter as much, except for the fact that you might see some of the canvas pop through if your paint isn't thick enough or if it drips over the edges, but it doesn't really have any bearing on the way that the colors that are layered on top of your base paint are going to interact with it. So I'm gonna start out by dropping my green paint on the base and then I'm gonna take my blow dryer and just get an even coat on my the base of my canvas before I pour any of the other colors on top. The first color that I'm going to layer on, I'm going to use this completely transparent primary magenta by Amsterdam. I'm going to just use one of the corners of the canvas. I'm going to lay this color directly on the green and then I'm going to use my blow dryer to blow over the to blow the primary magenta over the green. And before I get to the blow dryer, I want you to see what kind of color results I'm going to anticipate. Since the red has some transparency, I'm expecting it to blend with a green and create like a brownish, purpley kind of color. Yep, there it is. You can see in some of the places where the paint has gotten a little bit thinner, there are some darker areas and that is where the green is reflecting back through that primary magenta and creating that darker purple color. Next up, I'm gonna be using opaque pink and this is a very light pink. It's probably has a lot of titanium white mixed in it and I am anticipating not seeing any change of color necessarily because of the opacity of the paint pigments. And there you go. 
you can see that there are some places where the green is showing through, but it's not really changing the color at all of the pink. Now I am going to flip the canvas around so we can use the other two corners and you can have the best vantage point from where the camera is. I am going to do the next one using titanium white as my base color. And then the secondary color is the transparent primary magenta that I used and the right below it. I want you to see the beautiful difference between adding that white opaque color before the green. In my opinion, it ends up looking like this absolutely beautiful white and magenta tulip that blooms in the spring. It does have a lot of bubbles in it just because I just mixed up that white and did not have did not leave it enough time for the bubbles to escape but I don't know I think it adds this really beautiful look to it and you can see that there are very few areas where the magenta is actually just sitting over the green and in most of the places it's over the white and the white is reflecting back through the magenta so that you're not getting any of those dark areas. The fourth corner I am going to use that opaque pink color underneath the transparent primary magenta. You can see that the pink is completely opaque and the magenta is completely transparent. And I just want you to see the difference between using just the pink or using just the magenta and how the colors mix together so beautifully and create so much depth and flow to the movement. None of these options is wrong. They're just different. And here are the finished dried results. Take note in the upper left hand corner that the primary magenta dried even darker than it looked when it was wet, while the rest of the colors maintained their vibrancy and brightness. That is all because of the opacity levels of the paints. If you're still hanging in here with me, then my guess is that you find this interesting and helpful. So I thought I would do another test case scenario for you. My base color is going to be Prussian blue, which is a transparent color. You can see that the metallic colors are considered semi-transparent because they have half a block. The magenta is completely transparent because the block is empty. In my experience, Prussian blue dries almost looking like black. And I really wanted this color to dry like a navy blue and not like black. So I added some opaque sky blue light to the color before I mixed it up with the pouring medium. And I'm hoping that this will allow the color to dry like a very dark blue and mix with the other colors in a nice way. The first color that I'm going to lay down here is that transparent primary magenta, the same one that I used over the green base. And I am expecting some color shifting and some color changing because of the transparency of this color over the blue. Yep, there it is. You can see some dark purple areas in there where the blue is reflecting right through that primary magenta and creating purple. It's really pretty. I'm going to be interested to see once it's dry, if you can see that color at all. And if you're interested to see that, make sure you stay until the end because I will come back and show you the dried results. The second corner, I started by laying down copper. And on top of that, I'm going to be laying some gold. Copper and gold are metallic colors, and they do behave differently <laughs> than regular semi or fully transparent colors because of the pigments. And look at that. That is stunning. I love where the gold mixed with the blue and created some greens. Really, really pretty. I love to use metallic colors for that purpose because you can get some really bright mixing of colors. The third one, I am starting by laying down sky blue light, which is a completely opaque color. And then I am going to add the magenta on top of that. I want to see if it holds the magenta color or if you still see some of the blue from the sky blue light coming through and creating some purple areas. And you do. You see some lighter purple areas, almost like a, a violet color coming through. And that created some nice mixing too. And then for the fourth corner, I'm going to lay down the sky blue light and then I'm going to put the metallic colors on top. I'm not really anticipating this looking great, but this is why I do test canvases. I do small areas and I blow the colors out because sometimes you're surprised and you just never know 
what it might look like once the colors layer and mix together. And it never hurts to try something new. And there you have it. That is definitely not my favorite mix of colors. Although I do think it would look really pretty if it had titanium buff beneath it instead of that sky blue light. I'm really digging the subtle look of that gold and copper. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that onto a bigger canvas because I got inspired from my test canvases. And sometimes when I'm inspired, I just can't wait. I have to do it right away. <laughs> and that is the case for this painting. So sit back and enjoy the painting and I hope you love the end results. In case you were wondering, all of the paints today were mixed using Olga Sobe's Group 2 recipe. If you have not taken her course yet and you would like to learn how to use her mixing and layering method, you can click on the affiliate link in my description. And here are the dried results of this painting. I love it. I feel like it transports me to a magical land in a faraway place that is out of this world. 
I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you found value in it, please like, subscribe, share the video, all the things that will help the algorithm. And I will see you for the next one.